four. And uh, joining me in the studio right now is Mr. Don Posh of Indigo. And uh, how you doing this morning, young man? Uh, young man, thank you so much. Well, I, I didn't. I don't you're... feel that often, uh -huh. you know. Uh, uh, we're, uh, uh, <laughs> you and I are, are uh, sporting these uh, gray domes, you yeah, know. Yeah, so, well, uh, but still, you're younger than me, so I can still call you a young man. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I, that, that year makes as a big difference. As long as you don't call me old man, that I would. You know, I'd appreciate that. I'll wait till you get on my nerves. I might do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I see you're sporting plaid today. This is, is this the winter wear that uh, everybody's, or not the winter, but the fall wear that everybody's going to be wearing now? This is northern you know, Wisconsin. Flannel I, is it, man. I you, wore my camouflage shirt today, if you noticed. It's, oh, yeah. You're still hanging on to the summer that was. <laughs> from 90 to 30 in a couple of days it's yeah. unbelievable how that went and it seems like uh things are changing quickly yes it is yeah the colors are starting to change earlier than normal we already had well today i think we had our first frost in several areas um down at the airport it was 32 degrees and i saw some glistening on the uh, uh grass tops if you will as I was driving in today, and I thought, oh, that's a little frosty there. And so even though it wasn't really a good hard frost, it, it still, I think, counts as our first frost. Well, that'll uh, help push some of the sweet goodness into those apples because oh, yeah. after, the, after they get cold like that, they, they taste a lot better. Yeah. You don't want to pick them too early. Well, and I was reading an article earlier this, this morning that uh, – the apple and grape harvest at orchards is uh, doing very, very well, even though they had a drought uh, in the northern counties here in Wisconsin. They had some uh, pretty good years that I thought maybe the drought would have hurt them, but they said, no, it, it really had a good effect on apples and grapes. And I didn't know we were growing grapes in Wisconsin. Oh, absolutely. The Wallersheim I, Winery is one of the oldest wineries. It's down by uh, the Baraboo area, and that's been around for over yeah. 100 years so wow yeah yeah i had a friend of mine uh, rick saint germain he brought in some uh concord grapes now they were tiny they almost looked like blueberries but uh very good and, and uh, i was amazed that it's like we have grapes here in the hayward area well all those wild grapevines get grapes on them you just don't see them because the birds get to them before you do. oh okay and i'm usually not looking for that sort of product so. so well you've been busy what's uh what what have you been going to and, and speaking at and meeting other people oh well yesterday i was at the washburn county caregiver conference that was put okay. on by the uh adrc of washburn county great great people to work with there and i presented some information on assistive technology which is okay. uh, devices helping people to age in place. So sometimes you have some difficulties with mobility, mobility, just getting around, getting yeah. up and down from chairs, getting in and out of bed. There's different devices that, that are there to help. I, I started off with uh, the oldest piece of assistive technology, which is the cane. Oh, mm -hmm. and you know, and and the one that I have has that uh, prong on there for the ice, you know, the flip down prong. Oh, yes. And, yep. you know, I kind of use the cane in a way that you would, you know, thinking way back, it's kind of gives you some distance between you and the critter that wants to eat you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that was true. Think about, you know, how, how people survived way back when it was a lot more dangerous being human with other other mammals and critters that are just waiting looking for a meal and yeah. you looking like an easy easy one to take down yeah yeah wow but, but the crowd was really good their food there this is the the new wellness center um the food was great they had they had a salad bar with fruit and they had orange juice and uh the bad stuff for us like cookies and goodies that those things go really really quick 
but uh, the, the salad bar was complete, and they, they had uh, wild rice soup with chicken, and that was really, really tasty. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading an article uh, earlier this morning about uh, that uh, building being complete and all moved in, and then the uh, at-risk youth will be taking over the old building uh, in Spooner there, so it's a nice exchange of buildings for that community and yeah to hear that it's open now um boy let's let our seniors who are 50 plus know that that's open and ready to go and it's considered a wellness center because it's more of a multi-purpose building yeah but it is going to provide those senior activities like a lot of those uh you'll probably have those exercise activities and lunch and learns so sometimes i might be visiting that that facility again to uh, speak with the people in attendance there about different parts about aging and maybe about our assistive technology and the the programs that we offer. Yeah. Yeah. This article in the, in the Spooner paper did mention that there's more room now for exercise classes, a larger dining room area, a commercial kitchen, and of course, handicap accessible uh, that may not has been as well. The picture of the old one had a, an old wooden ramp that was, you know, handicap accessible, but um, it uh, has a better purpose now with this new place. So, yeah. And that came from the old ADRC building as oh, they, yeah. they moved everything to Shell Lake so they could get all our government offices yeah. for the county in one building, which works out a lot better for them. And then here was this abandoned building and they lobbied very hard and got the grants and were able to make that happen. And it was needed. It was, I was in the old senior center before and it was too cramped for the population. There was just, it probably thwarted people from wanting to attend because you need a little bit of room, you know, And, and we live in the woods and you know, a lot, a lot of us do, and we're not used to people being too close. We like our space, you yeah. know? I was out at the uh, LCO Elder Center, and they have a new one being built just two houses down from their current location, and there's going to be a lot more room in this uh, Elder Service Center uh, for LCO than they have currently. Um, you know, I did a computer class there yesterday afternoon. Actually, I have one again this afternoon there, and 15 people in there was not too cramped, but their dining space can probably only handle maybe 25 people. And um, they have a semi-commercial kitchen there. But again, the new LCO Elder Center will have a much more improved kitchen, nicer dining area, and uh, better offices, conference room, and again, classroom space. It's just going to be, so there's a lot of good things that are happening to our for our different communities here in Sawyer County and Barron County with our elders. Yeah, that's, and and the one thing that I heard yesterday, there was a county board member in attendance and he said that they were afraid that they wouldn't be able to fill the building up and we filled it up. Oh yeah. There was about (laughs) 70 people there yesterday. Sure. Yeah. So it was, it it was well attended and uh, talked to a lot of great people there and hopefully we'll be able to solve some of their problems or give them the right direction to uh, assist them with their aging in place and caregiving needs. Yeah. Well, and uh, speaking of LCO, there's a conference coming up here on September 19th and 20th. What do you know about this conference that's coming up? It's called the Tribal Caregiver Conference, but it's open to the public and it's a free event. So non-tribal members can attend, I'm assuming, since it's open. And uh, do you know much about this conference? I'm going to be there. Oh, you're going to be there. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Well, I'll have, of course. I'll, have, uh, I'll have a table out there. On just the first day, Tuesday the 19th, but that's the full day event. So it starts at 8 and goes to 5.30. So uh, I will be there the entire day. I'm not going to bug out early. So if people that are listening now have questions, I know we've, you know, we've been doing this for almost two years now. So we've covered a lot of different subjects. So if you have some ideas of things that you want to talk to me about, come out to the conference. Um, I'll be set up there yeah. and you can meet, we can meet and uh, see if we could give you some direction. Yeah. Um, and I noticed in, on the flyer here, some of the topics that the 
conference will be covering is crisis situations and, of course, self-care because uh, the, the, uh, the theme of the conference is it's all about you, and they're going to be talking to the caregivers and how they can uh, take care of themselves because a lot of people think, well, you know, geez, the, the nursing home and hospital caregivers, um, yeah, they need some help, but it's, it's more, too, about the individuals who are taking care of their elderly family members in their home. Family and they caregivers don't, do. They don't consider themselves a caregiver. It's like, well, this is my dad. Yes, right. but you're still his caregiver. Mm-hmm. And there's still things that you need to do to, one, take care of yourself to be safe and, you know, have a good mind about this as you're taking care of an older adult. And one of the other topics here is, is about dementia. And they're going to have a special uh, presentation about living with dementia and coping as a caregiver in the community. And that can really speak to an individual with a, another family member uh, or a friend that's living, that they're living with to care for them. And uh, it's a, it's going to, it sounds like a very good conference. Well, the dementia, of course, is difficult to deal with. We, I, I had some questions yesterday regarding uh, tracking. You know, like, do you put air tags on the clothes? You know, what oh. if, what if uh, <laughs> mom steps out? And I said, well, let's look at a door alarm. You know, maybe we could get a door alarm. So when you're sleeping, if it's the middle of the night and mom yeah. wakes up and tries to get out takes a stroll outside yeah we can protect them from the elements because you know yeah. a lot of us once again live in the woods and we're in some places where it'd be difficult to find somebody if they just kept going yeah ah, that's a good idea yeah where do you stick an air tag on a body or on <laughs> their shoes on but their but, shoes. but the the person says well uh what if they don't take their shoes right you know, so, and then, well, you could put these things on clothes, but um, what if how do you know it? which ones they're yeah, going to be wearing ones gonna at be wearing. which time? And but air, the, air tags are expensive. <laughs> so we would, I, I would think that just starting with an alarm yeah. would be good. There's, and I demonstrated another one that was uh, like a bed and a chair alarm. So if somebody's not supposed to get up or you need to know that they got up, right. There's an alarm that is attached to, it's a pad that goes under the bedding. Okay. And it's a pressure sensor. A, yeah. Just a pressure sensor and alerts the caregiver that that yeah. person has got up and moved. Okay. So there's, there's oh, things that's out a good there. idea. Yeah. Yeah. We covered, we covered a lot of different things, a uh, signaling system that was for, uh, Someone that is hard of hearing or severely hard of hearing, they have a caption phone and so forth, right. but this uh, will make the light flash inside when someone rings the doorbell of her apartment. Okay. This also will, is attached to the light and a bed shaker for the fire alarm. Oh, so, okay. and then the clock goes into the bed shaker for waking up yeah. and the light can also flash. So there's these, these devices do a lot of different, uh, operations to help someone that is hard of hearing <laughs> so that they I can just see this little image of minions coming out and shaking the bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right no alarm. minions. We don't no get min minions. <laughs> Uh, well, also coming up, uh, besides the LCO caregiver conference is the St. Croix Haugen, uh, health fair. And, uh, I think you're going to be at that as well. I will be at that as well. I've been going to that one for the last three years or more. Okay. So this will be, yeah, this might be my fourth time out there. And it's, uh, they're usually, they set us up uh, outside which is okay. interesting because we've had some really great weather in the past and it looks like the weather's <laughs> going to be good, good next week. So okay. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, a lot of people have a tendency to actually stop by and ask questions. So that's what I'm there for is to maybe point in the right direction. The, yeah. the people that might help you, it might not be me, but they're across the lot in that other spot. So, uh, 
go see them. So right. that, that's what we do by information and referral, just like the ADRC. We all do information and referral. You come and ask us if we don't do it, we'll try to help you find you know out who, who does might, it yeah. and connect you and try to eliminate those multiple calls to agencies all over before yeah. you finally get an answer. Yep. Been there, done that. Um, so the St. Croix conference, what's the date and the time? That will be the following day. That's September 20th and it okay. starts at 10 AM and goes to 2 PM. And they do have some, they have some entertainment going on that night as well. Okay. So this is just a resource event. There's, is there any presentation that you know of? No, there's, it's more like a resource fair. Okay. So we meet with, uh, Glitzy, which is Great Lakes uh inter tribal <laughs> commission something like I that <laughs> uh and, and uh there's vocational rehabilitation for native americans and some of these people i've met with uh uh every time they they're they're a great group and they do a great job out in our area taking care of people with disabilities and uh, helping with employment options and sure. school and everything. So uh, there these, if you have a person, uh, a child with a disability, it's, it's a good way to get information. And if you're elderly with, you know, sometimes it's difficult people that have age related disability don't tend to relate to the word disability mm -hmm. yeah you know i just have diabetes right i just had a stroke i just can't breathe yeah you know well that's a disability not right. everybody has that and it does prevent you from living in a way that you did previous to having this condition sure yeah so um we like to try it, it seems like for the most part people that I meet with our age 50 on up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what we want to do once again is help them to understand that there are ways to deal with things that they may not have even thought of. If you're never exposed to a device that makes your life easier. Yeah. How do you know it exists? You don't know it exists. So, so Very cool. asking questions and uh, presenting your condition to someone is helpful for you to go through life in a better way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I noticed there's a Sawyer County conference coming up as well. I don't, I don't have information oh, on that. So I you'll have to one. give me a copy of that let, when you're done. Let me, let me put on my spectacles. Okay. That's a disability device. Help uh, a device. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a caregiver conference when caregiving calls. Join us for the following Sawyer County. So the, we're going to do this broadcasting of this. This is the first time ever. We're oh. going to broadcast this conference so that we could get out to locations in the county. If this does work well, this will be the way that we could bring in bigger speakers and sure. have this conference because this goes through Northwoods Tech. Okay. And so this is going to be broadcast probably all throughout our listening area. This is just the location I'm going to be at. I know there's they're going to be broadcasting it in Price County, and I'm assuming Barron County as well, and then um, in Superior. Okay. So now it, when you say broadcast, you mean live stream? It's going to be or radio broadcast. It's going to be live stream. Okay. See, right. now you're the technical guy. Yeah. Thanks well, for correcting yeah, me. Yeah, because that. broadcasting, I automatically think of radio and broadcasting over the airwaves versus live streamed. That's a little different way of broadcasting on the internet. So just, yeah. Yeah. Te yes. Technical clarification. So we got three locations yeah. in uh, Sawyer County. We're going to be at LCO's Aging and Disability Services. Okay. So that'll be right here. We will be at the Hayward Senior Resource Center. And myself, I'm going to be at the Waldo Center, which is out in Winter. Where's Waldo? I don't know Never where they might. put Waldo. Well, they put it in Winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they did. And that's that's a acronym that includes Winter and I Winter Area. 
uh, <laughs> it's an acronym, right? <laughs> um, Loretta <laughs> Draper oh. Ojibwa. Okay, you got it. Uh, it just took me a minute. Well, it's uh, I've been you had a busy, senior, man. A I, senior I, moment. Yeah, I have those. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, I, I, I think, uh, I think by um, tribal standards, I am. Yes, I am an elder. Yep, 50, so, fifty-five and older. Oh, I've been, <laughs> I've been one for a while. <laughs> I told my wife that when she turned fifty-five, it says. Hey, you're a, you're an elder elder as far as LCL is concerned. You can join the elder um, organization here, and, it's, and she just rolled her eyes and says, "No, I'm not an elder." I said, "Yes, you are, dear." Yeah, maybe it's, that's just because by that age you've gained enough experience to have knowledge and should be joining these things because you have to share that knowledge and enlighten yeah. the world. And we can also now get more discounts at restaurants depending on their age bracket you know restaurants yeah i don't do that you don't do restaurants no you don't do the senior menu at the restaurant i don't, I don't go to restaurants oh well, <laughs> there's your first problem is you yeah. don't go to restaurants the, yeah <laughs> everything that aarp offers i don't do so yeah. it doesn't really help me out all right so so, so what's this, happening at this sawyer county is there so they're going to be broadcasting the speakers there and okay. i will be uh, more like an MC. I'm going to be with uh, Jillian Stone from TMG, and she's my technical person. She's young, so she knows how to set things up. Okay. I know how to blab, so set up between us, we'll be able the, to make it yeah. work. Uh-huh. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one. So it's going to be quite a packed week. All this goes on next week. Yeah, how is all this stuff happening? It's It just seems like there was an organized um, effort between all these disability and senior organizations to have these events all within the same couple of weeks is this just coincidence or is there been a push in the community in this caregiver community to do these conferences now i think it coincides with uh the alzheimer's association and the dementia month for some reason september seems to be oh okay and, and these are put on by our uh dementia coalitions okay so i'm part of the dementia coalition for burnett washburn sawyer and price counties so they're all happening and this is so cool that now price county will be enjoying the live stream broadcast there as well and i don't have the location with me at this time sure but um because I, I just found out recently that they're going to be doing it. So yeah, they get it a would chance to really to, get a promo on it. Yeah, if you can get me that information, because then I can add it to our community calendar announcements as far as locations and where people can go and what time they can go there. And if this live stream is, you know, where we're on YouTube, they could find this or on Facebook. So individuals who can't go to any of these can attend, right? Um, the way that I understand it, I, I believe so, but yeah. I don't know if there's a registration fee for you doing it at home. Okay. I'm not that the yeah. money part is not my, we'll, my thing. We'll figure that out and let our listeners know, but I'll, I'll get, I'll get you that information on price County as soon as I can. And this, this, uh, live streaming will mean that we could reach more people in the future and the farther reaches of our rural counties and yeah. that, that this experiment is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. Very good. Well, Don Posh, besides being a music host here at WOJB, you are an independent living specialist with Indigo, and uh, you represent Burnett, Washburn, Sawyer, and Price Counties. And I'm going to give people your phone number so they can call you. How's Do you that? have my 800 number? No, but the, who uses 800 numbers anymore? Well, because uh, we're serving the other parts of our listening area, too. So oh, we're covering Superior. So true. we're covering Douglas, Douglas, Bayfield, Ashland, and Iron Counties as well. Yeah. Well, you give them the 800 number then. 800-924-1220. What was that again? 800 Yeah. 924 We're talking to people that write slow. <laughs> One, two, two, zero. Thanks, Don, for coming in. Here comes democracy.